Hello dear students, today we will discuss how data is represented in the form of graphs in biostatistical analysis. So there are a large uh, variety of graphs which are used in practice. But before going to the types of graphs used, we will just uh, make a comparison between data representation using uh, pictures or diagrams and uh, that using graphs because we earlier had a discussion on data representation using diagrams. So when we compare, uh, first thing is that usually for constructing a graph we make use of a graph paper when it is done manually. Now we can do it in software but uh, a diagram is usually constructed in a plain paper. Then. Uh, or in other words we can say the graph represents the mathematical relationship between two variables whereas it is not depicted uh, well in a diagram. The second thing is uh, though the diagrams are attractive to the eye, they give uh, or they give an analytical value for a layman but uh, not in the point of view of a statistician or a research worker. But graphs are very much used by statisticians and research workers in analysis because they more accurately represent the data to scale. Third is usually graphs are more preferred for uh, representing frequency distribution, time series etc. Uh, graphs are more appropriate and uh, in fact for presenting frequency distribution diagrams are rarely used. So this is a comparison between the use of graphs and diagrams. Now we will go to the different types of graphs used in data representation in biostatistics. So we can categorize them into line graphs and graphs of frequency distribution. So the two categories are line graphs and graphs of frequency distribution. The graphs of frequency distribution in turn are of different types. They can be in the form of histograms or frequency polygons, smooth frequency curve and cumulative frequency curves or ogives. So these four are the types of graphs which are used for representing frequency distribution. So first we will go to the graph of time series or line graphs. Line graphs are used when we observe the values of a variable at different points of time. A series will be formed. So that is known as a time series. And the technique of graphic presentation is extremely helpful in analyzing changes at different points of time. Usually on the x-axis, x-axis we generally take the time. So here you can see the various years and on y-axis we take the value of the variable. For example, here in y-axis the population size is shown. So we are representing the uh, change of population throughout this period that is within a period of uh, 10 years starting from 1980 to 1990. On the x-axis the time is plotted and on y-axis the variable will be plotted. The graph thus formed is called as a line graph. They are uh, widely used, they are very simple to understand, uh, you can e easily make it and they are most adaptable to many cases. Technical skill is also not required and uh, many variables can be shown on the same graph and a comparison can also be made. Now, so this is how you see, you can see uh, in each year what is the population and uh, a line graph is shown here and these line graphs another data I'll show you which will which can be de depicted through a line graph that is here you can see uh, it's no, uh, not necessarily uh, be time always on the x-axis here you can see a particular drug used for inhibiting inflammation. So you can see when we increase the dose of the drug, drug, the inhibition, the percentage inhibition of inflammation is also increasing. So such changes over a period of time or over a range of concentrations or over uh, such observations we can uh, 
uh, represent with the help of line graphs. Now, the line graphs are in two ways. One is called as an arithmetic line graph which is constructed on a natural scale and the other is called as a logarithmic scale. In natural or arithmetic scale, absolute changes from one period to another are shown. So, here you can see this is this one is the absolute scale. So, here it is the arithmetic scale where the absolute values are, show, values are shown. For example, at a concentration of 3, uh, you are getting a percentage inhibition of around uh, 33 or something. At 6, you are getting 42. At 9, you are getting uh, somewhat near 70. So, here we are plotting the absolute values. The absolute changes are being shown here. Whereas, in logarithmic scale, what you say is the rate of change or the related change is shown. That means it shows you the trend. It is showing you the trend. So, this is the logarithmic scale. This is the trend line. It will only show you the trend or it will show the rate of change. So, here what you see is one built on an arithmetic scale and here is the trend line which has been constructed on a logarithmic scale. So, this is how you construct the two types of line graphs that is arithmetic and logarithmic. Again give you a clear idea. This is one which is constructed on an arithmetic scale and this is one which is constructed on a logarithmic scale. So, logarithmic scale or ratio scale will give you the trend line. Go to the different types of graphs of frequency distribution. So, the manner in which the frequencies are distributed over the different classes is called as frequency distribution of the character under study. So, there are many ways to represent a frequency distribution. The first one is histogram. What is histogram? It is a set of vertical bars whose areas are proportional to the frequencies represented. So, you have many bars whose area will represent the uh, frequencies on the uh, uh, frequencies represented. So, uh, while constructing a histogram, the variable is always taken on the x axis. Here the body mass index, it is always taken on the x axis and the number of individuals showing each is on the y axis. So, here you can see the body mass index is given and here the number of individuals who belong to each BMI category. So, you can consider them as class intervals that is 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, 21 to 22 like that. So, each class is represented by a distance on the scale that is proportional to the class interval. So, here I told you this is 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, 21 to 22 like that. So, the variable on the x axis and the frequency on the y axis. So, this is how a histogram is constructed and the uh, each vertical bar has an area which is proportional to the frequency represented. Before going to the next frequency distribution, we will just take a comparison between a histogram and a bar graph. Bar graph is actually a diagrammatic representation. Histogram is a uh, graphical representation. So, we will see the differences. This is a bar graph and this is a histogram. Bar graph consists of rectangles which are normally separated from each other with equal space. So, here you can see gaps in between. Each bar represents one observation. Okay, so, here one country is represented. So, there will be gaps in between. Whereas, in histogram you can see rectangles touching each other. There will be no gaps. So, based on appearance, we can uh, distinguish the first feature between the first feature that is there will be gaps in between the bars in bar diagram whereas they won't be there in histogram. But why? In histogram, 
the frequency is represented by the area of each rectangle. So, the area is also area also matters here. Now, in a bar diagram, the frequency is represented only by height, width has no significance. So, here width has significance. Why? This is a two dimensional representation width and height are considered because each one represents a class interval each base represents a class interval so width matters whereas in histogram this is only a one dimensional representation only height is considered come to the second type of graph which is used for uh, showing frequency distribution it is called as a frequency polygon it is particularly effective in comparing two or more frequency distributions. So, there are uh, two ways in which uh, frequency polygon may be constructed. So, here this is another version of a histogram. So, here we will just see how it is constructed. First is from the given data you will draw a histogram. So, here you can see a histogram showing class intervals 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60 like that. So, this is basically a histogram. Then what you do? Now, you then join the midpoints of the midpoints of the upper horizontal side of each rectangle. So, you take each rectangle, the midpoint of the upper horizontal side of this rectangle is this the midpoint of the upper horizontal side uh, of this rectangle is this here, here and here. So, what you do? You will just join them by straight lines. So, you draw a histogram from the given data, then you join by straight lines the midpoints of the upper horizontal sides of each rectangle with the adjacent ones. The figure thus obtained is called as a frequency polygon. So, here you can see the frequency polygon is superimposed on the histogram. The line segments pass through the midpoints at the top of the rectangles of the histogram. Now, there is, uh, so uh, it starts from here and ends here. But sometimes you can also see that these lines, both the ends of the polygon are extended to the baseline. Here you can see, here even if you do not do it, there is no problem, but some statisticians will uh, represent data like this. That is, uh, they will prefer to close both the ends of the polygon by extending them to the baseline. So, here it is extended to the baseline and here it is extended to the baseline. Why? This extension is made to make the area under the polygon. So, this area, this area under the polygon equal to the area under the corresponding histogram. So, that is why it is extrapolated. So, this will make the area under the polygon equal to the area under the corresponding histogram. Now, instead of constructing a frequency polygon without uh, constructing a histogram. So, here what you do is you take each class 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. So, here the time is being plotted on the x axis and the frequency is plotted on the y axis. So, here what you can see is the midpoint of each class is taken. So, this is the midpoint of 0 to 10, this is the midpoint of 10 to 20, ok the midpoint is taken and uh, against each the frequency is plotted. So, the frequency corresponding to each point is plotted without constructing a histogram you can do it. Then, then what you do? Then you join all these points by straight lines. So, even without constructing a histogram we can directly go for a frequency polygon by uh, taking the uh, taking the midpoint of each class interval and plotting the frequency and then joining the joining them with the help of straight lines. Let us take a comparison between a frequency polygon and a histogram. Frequency polygon has a special advantage over the histogram. 
here what you see here you can see uh, two uh, different different distributions can be plotted on the same axis this is uh, the weight which is shown in x axis frequency which is shown on y axis maybe it is of cattle so uh, this line represents that of herd 1 and this line represents that of herd 2 okay uh, many other uh, that uh, observations can also be plotted here or other distributions can also be plotted in the graph so the frequency polygon has a special advantage that uh, several distributions can be plotted on the same axis so that we can make comparisons so here this will give you space for comparing the two data and histograms are but histograms are preferred when classes are a few but if classes are numerous uh, we usually go for frequency polygons the third type of frequency distribution that is a smoothed frequency curve a smoothed frequency curve can be drawn through the various points of the polygon so here uh, it is drawn it is uh, drawn like a smooth curve the curve is drawn freehand in such a manner that the area included under the curve is approximately the same as that of the polygon so why is it drawn like this instead of constructing a frequency polygon this will eliminate any accidental variations that might be present in the data and uh, frequency curves usually met with uh, uh, now we will see the different types of uh, frequency curves so here there are uh, different types of frequency curves how do we classify them so the first based on the skew so what do you mean by skewing means symmetry that is the how much the uh, variables uh, depart from the central value or the symmetry or departure from the central value is called as skewness so here you can see this is a symmetric distribution in a symmetric distribution the mean median and mode will coincide they will be the same if it is not so the distribution becomes asymmetric this is asymmetric this is also asymmetric and this is called positive skew and this is called negative skew if the right tail is longer it is called a positive skew positively skewed distribution here it means that the mean is greater than median which is in turn greater than the mode then if the left tail is longer we get a negatively skewed distribution for which the mean will be less than median which is in turn less than mode so that is how the distributions vary between positive and negative and there are also normal distributions in normal distribution the mean median and mode will be the same in positively skewed distribution the mean will be higher than the others in negatively skewed the mean will be the least value of the least value than the median and the mode so skew shows the symmetry parameter which we look into in a frequency curve is the kurtosis kurtosis gives a measure of flatness of distribution the degree of kurtosis of a distribution is measured relative to that of a normal curve so here you can see this blue one is a normal curve set on certain standards so this is the normal curve the curves with greater peaks than the normal which is more peaked than the normal is called a leptokurtic curve whereas you look at this curve this is flatter than the normal curve it is called as platykurtic so the curves with higher peaks than the normal are called leptokurtic and the peaks which are flatter than the normal are called as platykurtic and a normal curve is said to be mesokurtic 
so kurtosis gives a measure of flatness or distribution so in a smoothed frequency curve certain parameters are looked into that is whether it is normal or positively skewed or negatively skewed whether it is normal or leptokurtic or platykurtic type of frequency distribution is called as ogive or cumulative frequency curves ogives are graphs that are used to estimate how many numbers lie below or above a particular variable or value in the data it is defined as the frequency distribution graph of a series so to construct an ogive firstly the cumulative frequency of the variables is calculated using a frequency table it is done by adding the frequencies of all the previous variables in the given data set the result of the last number in the cumulative frequency table will always be equal to the total frequency of the variable so cumulative frequency uh, we already know in a table how can we ca calculate the cumulative frequency now how it can be related to an ogive there will be two types of ogives one is called less than ogive and the other is called greater than or more than ogive in when we construct a uh, cumulative frequency curve based on uh, uh, less than series it is called a less than ogive if we construct an ogive based on greater than series it is called a greater than ogive so we will just see what is this less than and greater than frequencies so for that first i'll take you to a less than ogive so here you have uh, an observation that is you have divided it into uh, class intervals you have a frequency table here so suppose these are the marks which are scored by certain students in a class so this is between or the uh, the scores the grades so 0.5 to 4.5 there are two students who have scored between 0.5 and 4.5 six between 4.5 and 9.5 ten between 9.5 and 14.5 five between 14.5 and 19.5 and 3 between 19.5 and 24.5 now so the total number of students is 26 now how do we calculate the cumulative frequency the frequency of this class is 2 now you will add this to the frequency of the succeeding class that is 2 plus 6 is equal to 8 then 8 plus 10 equal to 18 plus 5 equal to 23 so the frequencies of the preceding classes are added here you can see uh, its frequency is 10 and 6 plus 2 is added to it that is how it is 18 here it is 5 but we will uh, to it we will add the frequencies of the preceding classes that is 10 plus 6 plus 2 then here Uh, the frequency of this class is three, but to that we will add the frequencies of the preceding classes. That is how you calculate the cumulative frequency. So, to the frequency of each class, the frequencies of the preceding classes will be added. That is called cumulative frequency, and we are plotting the graph based on that. So, this is called a less than ogive. So, what does this mean? here what does 2 mean 2 means how many students have scored less than 4.5 8 shows how many students have scored less than 9.5 so all these students will come under this category that is 2 plus 6 that is why it is 8 this 18 represents how many students who have scored marks less than 14.5 so all these students will come under that category that is why it is 18 then here you will represent how many students got marks less than 19.5 so all these students will come under the category because it ranges from 0.5 to 19.5 so you will have to add all the frequencies so 
Here what you do is to the frequency of each class you are adding the frequencies of the preceding classes. So that is how you calculate, uh, you uh, make a cumulative frequency table and then you plot the graph. And that is what is called as a less than ogive. Now we will go to a greater than ogive. In a, a greater than ogive, you will construct a greater than cumulative frequency series. So here again, the marks of students, the number of students who have scored marks in each category is given. Now first we have to construct the table. Earlier it was less than, but now it is more than. So how many students have scored more than one? All these students have scored more than one because this is 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40 like that. So all students in the class have scored more than one. That means all the 60 students have got marks more than one. Now next is how many students scored marks more than 11 out of all the 60 students except this three all others have scored marks more than 11 that means 60 minus 3 equal to 57 now more than 21 60 students of the class except these two categories scored more than 21 so uh, 60 minus 3 and 8 is equal to 49. So that is how you prepare a greater than cumulative frequency series. So for the first class you will write the total frequency. Then you, sub, uh, you subtract. So from uh, the frequency. Uh, you, uh, then what you do is uh, you will um, subtract the frequency of the preceding class. Here you can see the, uh, successively the frequency of the preceding class is subtracted. So that is how you prepare a greater than uh, cumulative frequency series and based on that we will have a graph. So this is a greater than ogive graph. So what difference did you see? This is a less than ogive and this is a greater than ogive. You can see the difference in the directions other various types of graphs which we use for representation of data. Thank you.